Okay, I'm gonna answer the question for you, how to make a delicious apple tart. This is a moderately complicated tart to make. Uh, depends if you've made it before, of course, but I'm gonna take you through it step by step and you're gonna find out that it's not that difficult, okay? We're gonna make this apple tart with the pot de sucre or the sweet dough, which I made in this class. This is the exact dough that was made in this class right here. And it was been in the refrigerator all night. I just took it out and it's a little bit hard, but it's not that hard. And we're going to use a false bottom fluted sided flan pan, flan pan for this also. And we're going to roll it out. We're going to put it in there and then we're going to do what's called baking the pastry shell blind. We're going to line it with some paper. I'm going to use rock salt as what they call pastry weights in it. We're going to par bake it, take it out, and then um, complete the process of putting applesauce in it, uh, putting sliced roasted apples on it, making a little bit of custard, pouring it on, and then finishing it off in the oven for another 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever it's going to take, okay? First, I'm going to show you how to get the dough rolled out. We're going to get the, roll, the dough in the flan pan, flan pan, and lined with the paper and the rock salt and in the oven. Then we'll take you on to the next step of roasting the apples, okay? All right, so a little bit of flour to lubricate the table. Now, sometimes I'm going to use, well, I'm going to use my tapered pin because I like it because it gives me a, the advantage of making the dough thin or thick in whatever little spot I want to make it in. Now, this dough, unlike a lot of other ones, might break up on you. But as I told you, when I made this dough uh, in this class, in the, in, the, in the video for making this, is that you could make this dough and treat it like silly putty in the tart shell itself, okay? So let's get it kind of opened up a little bit. It breaks up in little pieces on it a little bit, but it's, that's partly because it's real cold. There's a fair amount of butter in here. As it softens up a little bit, it breaks up a little bit less. But you'll notice I can just put it back together as I'm going along here. And you can do the same thing with this dough in this shell itself. Which is what we're going to do. Okay, I think we got it rolled out enough to get it inside here. Now this is always a little bit tricky because this has a way of falling apart on you. And here's where the silly putty part comes in. See, it's broken here. But we're going to patch it back together. You can literally add pieces of dough to any part of this that you think is too thick or thin, like this. Look, I'm just adding the dough to it. This is such a nice uh, pastry dough because it tastes like a little bit of a, like a cookie. Again, I'm going to do what I do with most of these tarts, which is give myself a little extra dough along the top so that I can, when I finish anchoring it in, it's slightly elevated above the top of the rim of the shell. Let's do a little silly putty over here. Some more there. 
bit more there. All right, let's see where we're at. We'll just clean it up like this, get all the excess off. Now we'll build it up a little bit like this on the edge. So it's higher than the rim of the, uh, or the top of the flan pan. Let's do a little silly, silly putty there. Let's do a little bit here to make it a little bit higher. This particular dough melts down a little bit also while, when it's being baked. I think we're looking pretty good there. Now this one's a little bit too thick right here. Let's take some of that off. Okay, we're looking good there. This dough freezes well too. Any scraps that you might have, you can freeze. Now, we're going to prick the bottom of this also, like we do so many of them. And now we're going to, uh, let me get a half sheet pan here, hold on. put this on a half sheet pan and we're going to take a piece of baking paper lay it on there and we're going to take some rock salt which we're going to use as our pastry weights if you will which is going to keep the shape and the form of the shell during this par baking process I use the rock salt over and over again between making ice cream and doing this so you don't worry about putting too much in, but you want to get it up here on the edges in particular because that's the part that has a tendency to fall in on you during the par baking process, okay? Okay, so now let's get the rest of this off. Okay, I'm going to pop this in the oven now while it's still a little bit cool. You don't want this getting really soft before you start baking it. So get it popped in the oven and we're going to par bake it at 400 degrees. For how long? Now, for this particular tart and the use of this particular dough, there's more than one kind of dough that you can use for this. I have three doughs in this class. The fine lining pastry, the pot de brise, and the pot de sucre. The sucre is the one we have today for this, but the... Um, the sucre, for example, if it's not a hundred percent crispy, crumbly, shortbready, like cooked, it's still good. The other two doughs that are in this class, they need to be cooked. Otherwise, they have a tendency to come off as doughy. But as you all know, you can eat raw cookie dough. And this has a tendency to taste a little bit like raw cookie dough because of the sugar and vanilla in it. So we're going to par bake this and we're going to take it out. We're going to put the applesauce in it that we made in this class that we have a video for. But uh, for right now, I'm gonna roast some apples for you and show you how that's done while this is par baking. And I'll be back in a few minutes. All right, the roasting of the apples for the apple tart. I peeled one, two, three, four, and I'm gonna peel another one for you here real quick. And we're gonna cut them in half. I'm gonna put them in a little pan with some butter some sugar, and a little bit of cinnamon, and a little splash of white wine I'm going to throw in there for fun. And we're going to get these roasted tender enough to, uh, uh, to eat. So I have the whole butter in here. And let's take the apples with the cores intact, put them right inside the butter. The butter's a little bit warm. I just took it off the stove. We got lucky. We got a perfect fit here almost. There we go. Okay, now let's just 
take some of the butter, put it on the top of these. We'll roll them around in it, whatever. Let's get them all, get a little bit of butter on them. This one's in my way. I suppose there's a lot of things you could do with these roasted apples besides what we're going to do with them by putting them on the tart, but uh, they're good. They're delicious. This apple tart's going to have so much apple taste in it by the time we're done. All right, so we're going to put a little bit of sugar on top of the apples and put a little bit of cinnamon. And I'm going to put a little shot of some white wine in here just to moisten this up a little bit. And I'm going to pop this in the oven, okay? Again, that's a 400 degree oven. We're going to cook those apples until they're tender enough to slice and eat because they're barely going to be cooked inside that tart later on. So you want them tender enough to so your fork can go through the tart shell without very much resistance. Okay, so that's the level at which we need to cook them. So I'll bring you back when they're done and I'll show you when we portion those apples and slice them and put them on the apple tart. Okay. Okay, I wanted to show you what stage the pot de sucre for the apple tart is in the oven. Now you see it's kind of set in motion here, okay? So it's time to get the rock salt out of there and the paper and put it back in and let it do a little bit more baking before you add the finishing part. So you carefully pick this up. your rock salt back in your rock salt container because that can be reused and reused. Okay, this is cooked enough. As soon as the apples are done roasting, which is going to be in about five minutes, we're going to, we're going to I don't need to rebake this anymore. This is baked enough just the way it is. There's a good example of you making the call. Now this is I told you just a second ago that I was going to take this off and then finish par baking it a little bit before we put the rest of the food in it to finish baking it. It doesn't need it. The shell is cooked enough just the way it is. So I'll be back in a minute with the roasted apples and we'll make the custard and we'll get this in the oven for a completing baking process. Okay, the apples are roasted and they are right here. I took them out of the oven a few minutes ago, gave them a little bit of time to cool sliced some of them up and I'm going to slice these three left that are left up. Now when you do this you don't absolutely have to slice the apples. I kind of like the effect of it but you can put them on the tart in pieces this size also. So I'm basically cutting the core out. See I'm making them into a sixth of an apple each one of these pieces. Yeah, they got to cool off a little bit if you do want to slice them the way we're doing it here. And we are about to make a little bit of custard for this and put the assembly, final assembly process together now. Here we have our fresh homemade applesauce. That is going to go in the bottom of this tart shell. You can put as much or as little of this on as you want and you can put as much or as little of the custard into the shell as you want so that you if you want it to be more custardy with some apple but not as much apple then don't put as much apple in. Put a little bit more of the custard in. I kind of like it with mainly apple and I like to serve this dessert slightly warm so after it cools when you slice it you can microwave a little piece to make it tepid so it's not cold Okay, so we got ourselves a layer of applesauce here now. Okay, in the bottom. Now, let's take the apple that I have pre sliced here and set it in here.
Here, let me. Notice how I'm kind of fanning the apple a little bit as I'm laying it in there. You can fan it in any direction you want, of course. The point that you're probably getting already is this apple tart is going to taste a lot like apple when we're done here. Because that, that's all that's in here is apple. I love this tart. This is so good. By the time we get the caramel on top of this. So let's slice up a couple more pieces here. You can pack this as tight or as loose as you want with your apple. Your apple slices, that is, okay? I could, if I wanted to, go around the perimeter Put more apple slices on it. I'll throw a few more on just for fun. Don't have to though. You got enough apple here. And you're going to see because we're going to pour the liquid custard over this and rebake this shell um, to cover the apple. It's not going to be a hundred percent covered. I kind of like to have the slices of the apple visible through the custard uh, on the finished tart itself. You'll notice this apple is soft, and it's tender enough to eat and slice with your knife now, which is what you want. Okay, so as it turns out, we used almost all, what's it, five or, I think five of those apples. We used all five of them, yeah, except for this one little piece here. So about a half of an apple didn't get used here. Okay, now... We're going to make a little bit of custard with some vanilla, powdered sugar. So I think for this size tart, what we probably need is about six egg yolks and one cup of cream. Okay, so let's get six egg yolks into our little mixing bowl here. A big chunk of this is being done in real time, which is good. Gives you a good idea as to how long it takes you to do it. But this is a moderately complicated tart. You have to make custard, we're making now. You have to roast apples. You have to make applesauce. You have to make the tart shell itself. You have to bake it three different times, usually. Today we're only baking it twice because it was baked enough after I par-baked it with the, rock, with the rock salt in it, you know. And we're going to take about, we're going to sweeten this up to whatever extent we want, okay. We could make lemon custard here if we wanted. Um, I'm going to make plain vanilla. I'm going to put about uh, three, quarters, three quarters of a cup of powdered sugar in here. I'm going to cream this with the powdered sugar. The egg yolks first. Make sure it's nice and smooth and creamy before we add the heavy cream to it. Now we're going to add about a cup of cream to it, maybe three quarters, and a couple tablespoons of pure vanilla extract in there. Give it that little extra flavor. Okay, now, the best way to get the custard into the tart shell and into the oven is to pour the custard on the tart in the oven itself. So let's take the sheet pan that it was on. Let's put it back on the sheet pan. Let's take the custard and the tart down to the oven, kneel down in front of the oven and put the custard in it. Here we go. This way you don't have to worry about spilling the custard and also gives you an opportunity to fill it to the maximum amount. Mm -hmm. 
There, it all went in, all of it. So that's the perfect measurement that we made for this, okay? Now I'm going to put this in the oven and finish this off at 350 degrees. This tart will not be done now until that custard is firm and set. Now if you want to have it be firm and set faster than this six egg yolk, one cup of cream uh, proportion will set it at, then you can add, make it eight egg yolks. It'll set faster the more egg yolks against the amount of cream that you have, okay? So I would say we're probably looking at 20 minutes. So I'll be back when it's done and I'll tell you exactly how long it took. It starts going to be really good when we get done with it. Okay, the apple tart, the custard is set. It's ready to come out of the oven. I'm going to take it out right now. I just checked it and it uh, looks good. This is a hot little mama, and so I must have, when I put that crust in there, I must have, I mean, when I poured that custard in there, I must have spilled some on this thing, and I didn't even know it. Look at that. But it's got nothing to do with this tart. This tart's beautiful. Um, this needs a fair amount of time to cool, and it needs to be cold before you actually slice it. So we're going to let it cool off. It's going to be, I'm not going to be back to finish this tart and put it on a plate with you for three or four hours. I'm going to put it in the refrigerator to cool, but before it gets completely cold, I'm going to get this tart shell off of here. Um, and I'll do that off this camera for you, but it's mainly just going to be pulling it out. Very similar to the fresh fruit berry tart that we made in this class also. So let's let it cool and I'll bring it back and we'll deal with the caramel glaze, the whipped cream, the creme on glaze vanilla sauce, and the presentation of the plate for this item later. The apple tart is a hundred, not 100% cold, but it's pretty cold. Cold enough to cut for us to splash some warm caramel sauce on it and put it on a plate for you, which is what I'm going to do right now. Here we go. Now, you want to be careful so you don't destroy the visuals on what it looks like. And again, one of the things I like to do is I like to take an individual piece, put it on a plate, and just make it a little bit tepid inside of a microwave, you know what I mean? So it's not 100% cold. But it's very difficult to slice this when it's not cold, okay? So let's get this piece out of here, and one piece if we can. There we go. And let's take the warm caramel sauce, which I have right here. You know you have a video for this. You can put it right on the top. Nice, 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 nice. Then, a little bit of whipped cream. Then, a little bit of vanilla sauce, which I love this combination, if you haven't been able to figure that out yet, of the whipped cream and the vanilla sauce with simple desserts like this. A little bit of powdered sugar, and you are good to go. There's your, what can be, obviously, a slightly warm apple tart, which I didn't warm it up, but... Um, I guarantee you, when you eat this, all you're going to get is apple, apple, apple explosion in your mouth, too, because of the applesauce and the roasted apples. You have two different apple textures and flavors in each individual bite of this dessert. Enjoy it. I've sold a lot of these, made a lot of these in the hundreds to um, people, and they all really liked it a lot. Enjoy it.